Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Small Town Music. Um, it's been it's been a minute. Um, welcome to the end of the school year. If you're a first time teacher, a new teacher, it is hectic. Bless like, you, bless yeah. you for being. Thank May you. <laughs> in your first year teaching. Um, but yeah, we're here. We're doing it. We currently only have nine more school days left, which is amazing. Somehow too many, but also yeah. amazing like, yet also awful. Right. It's just, it's okay. So since the school year's kind of wrapping up, um, I know like the thought of professional development makes my head hurt. <laughs> so we we decided today to talk about kind of how to continue to be a musician. How do you keep up your musicianship? My cat's going to join us. Um, so how do we keep up being a musician? Uh, so we're going to talk about kind of ways that we currently do that, ways that we are hoping to do that next year. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know... We all became music teachers probably because we were first musicians, whether that means just from when you were, I don't, I'm so allergic. Um, (laughs) It's not that I hate cats. I love cats. I just can't. She's just very allergic. Um, But you know. (laughs) We became music (laughs) teachers because, because we are first musicians. Right. And so that means just, you know, where you played in, you know, you started in high school and and working your way through, but um, it's really easy to lose that love of music. Um, It's really easy to get burnt out whenever your days are spent trying to shape uh, (laughs) shape the next generations of musicians, whether they want to be or not. Um, And it can be frustrating, and as we all know, and so... Um, Today, we're just going to kind of talk about taking that time, taking that time to remind yourself why you love music and why you chose to do this and, um, and the joy that music, the joy that music does bring. Yeah. So for me, um, I got to take oboe lessons again because of my master's degree and it was, there are online zoom lessons and I like, you know, just like back in undergrad and then high school, it was like, oh God, lessons, like. I haven't practiced, I don't have time to practice, you know, that kind of thing. But it was really nice. My teacher was very um, accommodating and she knew, like I wasn't, I wasn't an oboe performance major. Like I had to fulfill this like instrumental, you know, performance requirement for my masters. And she was really, really good about like, okay, what do you wanna play? What's gonna serve you? So I think the biggest thing is finding music that serves you, whether that's old music that you've played before that you wanna brush up on, or um, new music that, like, I have always wanted to play the Vaughn Williams Oboe Concerto, and, and so I just, like, downloaded the free IMSLP, you know, PDF, and, and that's what we worked on for, like, a month, and it was really fun. And it wasn't, you know, like, I want to be good at it, but it was also, like, I don't have to perform this for a jury, I don't have to perform this for a competition or, you know, grade, like, I just get to play this for fun. Um, And also, doing the oboe lessons, because of my master's, it did kind of force me into a routine of playing again, where I would, I like to come to school early, like, I'm much more of a morning person. So, like, I would get to school around 7, 15, and just practice for, like, 30 minutes. 30, 40 minutes. And then that was how I started my morning, and it was really nice to, to be able to play music for myself, and also to just start my day with something nice (laughs) yeah and so I for a while started to like took piano lessons for a little while and whenever my son started taking piano um for a little while I traded lessons with the um and so she kind of like helped me um and I helped I I gave her daughter voice lessons for a little while so we just kind of traded that off um and that was really nice just to get someone to help me with my piano playing and just help me to play more musically. Uh, I'm the master of the umcha umcha um, <laughs> style of playing <laughs> arpeggios, all the arpeggios. Oh, yeah. um, and so, you know, she helped me out with that. And that was a nice way to just to take lessons to actually become a better musician. Um, but I really try to sing um, as often as I can to sing in in different ways so uh, one way that i also do is um, i lead worship at our church Uh, and so that gives me an opportunity to sing uh, to perform it's not a performance but to 
Um, but to every week I have this, this band, this group that we get together and we practice and we're working on new music and it gives us a chance to stretch ourselves musically. And it's a very um, different style of music than what we teach. It is right. And so we go to our church has a very contemporary service, um, which is a very different style of singing too, than I was trained in. And so, um, though I do get to sing, you know, much more like pop belt style music on Sunday mornings. Um, at school, I try to take time like during my prep or um, before or after school to really do a good like classic warm up to um, to sing some of my old art songs that I sang um, that I sang in college or whenever just to and remind be we graduated right just to remind my well and to remind my body yeah. my voice of really of, of the healthy style of singing because it's really easy with the with right. the more modern style it's really easy to do it unhealthily um in a way that's damaging and so for me it's really important that i remind myself of those good techniques and then uh, so i can apply those back to whenever i am uh, doing my work on sunday mornings this is not related at all but i just found out my watch i have my camera remote on my watch so yeah I'm... <laughs> fascinated so I'm... <laughs> i was like <laughs> okay so anyway <laughs> moving on so... <laughs> So for me, I play a lot in our pet band uh, because we are so tiny and we don't have... <laughs> hey, don't... I do that too. Yeah. <laughs> so that's also fun that like secondary instruments, like playing a new instrument. So I play oboe is my primary instrument, um, but I really like playing saxophone, like tenor sax and alto sax I'm pretty decent at and can play pretty well. Um, I have not... I can maybe do flute, but like those high notes, reading the ledger lines, I just like, I get lost up there. <laughs> and then clarinet, I don't know, it's just, it, clarinet is like different enough for me. But anyway, so I really like playing alto sax and that's something I can sight read pretty easily. And it's really, f it's a lot more fun to play in the pet band than to direct the pet band and stand there like by myself. Like being <laughs> in the pet band with the kids, it, it's just like, it's, for me it's a lot of fun. Like I really enjoy playing much more than standing there like all right come on let's go <laughs> one yeah. two so mm -hmm. that has also given me a better sense of um kind of what my students go through too like what what are we able to do what are we not able to do like what is gonna what is gonna work what's not gonna work and i just i think i know the pet band music better like i know our songs better or our pieces mm -hmm. and i i often pull out the alto sax part in band class because my high school band currently um, are one alto sax players and zero hour band, which is like not real band. <laughs> but um, so I get to play with them, which I think is really cool. Like they get to see that I play an instrument as well. I don't know what I was gonna say. Oh, and you're starting something new yeah, that, we, so that we get to work into this too. In, in our community, um, I pretty much since I moved here and then like when I started dating my now husband and I was like, yep, that's the one, we're gonna get married <laughs> and I'm probably not gonna move. Um, I, I really wanted to start a community band, um, just a chance for local adults to be able to make music again. Cause I know there's a lot of people that love music in, in our area and maybe in your area too, if there's not already one, especially if you're in a really small area. So I, I started this one for me because I wanted to have a community band. One uh, for our students to also see that this doesn't end when you leave high school. Like just because you're done with high school band doesn't mean you can't still participate. And I think seeing a lot of adults and we have, we have a wide range. We have people that just graduated a couple years ago and are still playing their instruments. We have people that graduated 60 years ago that really want to keep playing their instruments. We have people that, you know, they've got, um, they maybe have kids in my in my band, and so I think that's such a cool experience for them. One, they could even play with their parents or you know these community members, or two, they get to see that like the arts is still alive and people still appreciate the arts and want to make it happen. Yeah, last night I had the opportunity to go to a concert uh, that we had here, uh, a group called the Masters Men. They're a group of uh, they're a men's choir out of Louisville, Kentucky, and it was amazing to me. I don't know exactly because I did not pull their age, but I would say that the the average age was well into their 60s of these men who were singing. I mean, they were like all grandpa age, you know, men. Yeah. And they sounded amazing. And 
I was so excited. They had asked our choir to come and open for them. Do They do mostly patriotic and gospel music. So we'd done um, a patriotic medley that we had. And it was amazing to see these guys. And it was just, it really drove home the fact that music is something that you can do your entire life. You know, your knees may not let you play basketball <laughs> for your entire life. I, I mean, you know, I can't. But making music is something you can do for as long as you're around. And so that's one of our, that's one of our whys of why we teach music. And so um, showing our kids that we still make music, that we are musicians, I think is really important. I know, um, I mean, I know different directors who will, um, who will perform at their kids, at their concert as well. Um, And there's, that's kind of a, philosophical thing of whether you want to do that but but I do agree with the idea again that your kids get to see you be a musician as well and I think that's so that's our, important at our countywide band festival which we'll we will both you know kind of do an episode maybe later in the summer about hosting a festival um uh, do it <laughs> did we already do one I don't think we did we've, we've talked about our festivals but yeah so anyway yeah. the countywide festival all five county schools at least for me for band day um we all get together and so the director's um, this year we decided to do a quintet and a woodwind quintet. So because we have two clarinet players, me, oboe player, um, a tuba, and a percussionist, <laughs> so we we rewrote some of the parts to fit our instrumentation. But we really wanted to perform for our students, and that was a really fun thing that we got a lot of positive feedback. And people were like, "Oh, I didn't I didn't realize you actually are good musicians too." <laughs> right. Yeah, that's a funny thing. And like. We spend all this time practicing and honing mm-hmm. our instruments, and then we go teach, and it's like we don't play anymore. Or if we do play, like people don't really see it. But I want I want my students to know that I I play really well. <laughs> so yeah, so there's all those. So whether it's uh, community based organizations, and if you don't have one, start one. It's, um, it feels more daunting than it is. Like if you have questions about it, please email us Small Town Music Podcast at gmail.com. Yeah. Um, so yeah, please email because I mean I'm still like I'm clueless, but I'm just like you know what I'm gonna do it. We're gonna figure it. it out, and it's gonna be it's gonna be great. Yeah, um, you know you can practice on your own, just like old school back in college. You gotta practice, um, continue to practice to do, or you know get involved if you're part of a church or um, other similar organizations. Yeah, I think get like, involved ways to make music. Making it a point to play for your students is also a really good idea too. To like. Mm-hmm. I like once a month, you know, whatever, I'm going to play for my students. Yeah, and we do that even in elementary, you know, whenever we talk about uh, the different instrument families, like I will pull my clarinet out and play that for, you know, um, they'll, she'll play the oboe. Um, we've brought in, uh, we have a first grade teacher who's a trumpet player. And I said, hey, one day I'll come and cover your class if you'll come in. And, you know, because he knows more about the trumpet than I do, and he's a better player at it. Yeah. So, you know, will you come in and, and do that? And so giving those kids opportunity to see adults in their life um, also making music. Uh, the other thing is, you know, not necessarily honing your own skills, but like keeping your ear. your ear fresh is something we've been talking about. You know, when you are used to hearing middle school. Right, middle school beginning. <laughs> You know, um, band and choir, your ear gets very used to that. And you're like, wow, that was really good, guys. And for them, maybe it was. Yeah. Um, but something that's really been on my heart, I will say, um, is <laughs> I really want to make a point over the next year. You know, yeah. we're just down the road. Um, we're not too far from Indiana University, and they're an amazing music school. Um, and so something we really want to make a point is to um, go – and, and even some of the other local just, universities. Just listen just to Just go music. and like, listen. There's so many, we don't even have to pay for so many these performances. Free... And we just don't, we don't right. do it because we're like lazy. And and, well, because we're busy. Because <laughs> we're busy, you know. But yeah. I think, and really encouraging your kids to come too. Yeah. You know, set a, you know, set set a date. Pick yeah. a, you know, I don't know. Pick a clarinet recital and take your clarinet section to go see it. You know, yeah. pick a choir concert and take your choir to to see them, not only to see again more people doing what they do in a world where they're probably the minority, um, but to hear what really good 
musicianship sounds yeah. like. Um, and not to, just on YouTube. Like, it's so easy to oh, find yeah, on no. YouTube things. Well, and yeah, like, a live performance. And, like, for your own benefit, too. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Because I know sometimes I forget. Like, I hear a really good choir sing, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> and that's the thing against my, my singers I have at school, because they're middle school and high school kids. They're still learning, you know, but to, but to hear like, oh, like whenever a voice has been really, really well trained over years. I know we get emails, um, from any, you know, any of the universities within like a, an hour's driving distance. Sometimes like they're like, okay, we're doing this concert series and you can get free tickets for your students if you just ask us. Mm -hmm. And we, I, we took that opportunity because New York Voices came to. That was amazing. It was so good. They're so good. And we got to see them for free. That was fantastic. Yeah, that was, so like take advantage or like email the college and be like, hey, I want to take my students to this. Like what, you know, what kind of deal can you give me for these high school kids to come experience this opportunity? And those colleges, they love to use those as recruitment opportunities too. And so. We've done, um, we used to always pre COVID do a trip to the IU Opera. Yeah. And we would talk with the people at their, uh, the Musical Arts Center there where they do their operas. And we would get there maybe like three hours before the show would start. And they would take us on a tour. Yeah, and like go of, through the scene and like shop. They got, and, and they got to stand on the stage and see this amazing, you know. And then, yeah, so like this amazing the costume theater. shop. And talked about yeah. like the costume designers and, and creators and the scene shop and how they they make these scenes it was it's pretty phenomenal it's a fantastic thing yeah. and the kids loved it and then we would walk across the street and have pizza at the at the local pizza place local pizza shop and then uh and then go and see the opera and it, it was always a fantastic trip that the kids loved yeah. um and so anything you can do to get you to get you and get your kids out and listening to professional musicians um and just to keep your ear fresh um get out and hear Here's someone else except for the kids that come into your classroom making music. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and it just, I think it feeds your soul a little bit too. Like as a musician, like I get in this weird rut of like, I just don't listen to any music, whether it's like classical good music, quote unquote air quotes, or like, you know, just like popular music. Like I just don't because I'm We just have tired. noise in our head all day. Your yeah. ears are tired. Yeah, it's just like I need the sound. I need a podcast talking to me about <laughs> true crime. <laughs> um, but yeah, just to like, when I do sit down, you know, just this past week, I was, uh, I had some time after school. Like, I wasn't going to go home yet because uh, I, had, I had somewhere to go. And I didn't have enough time to, like, go home. And then, so I was just going to stay at school until I had to go um, to my thing. And, uh, and I just sat and, like, went through the J.W. Pepper website and was just, like, listening to concert band pieces. And then I, I, like, stumbled across this, like, you know, easier grade three version of Percy Granger's Children's March. So if you're a band director, you know, like, that's a phenomenal piece of music. And your, you know, high school band maybe can't play the original, and that's okay. But then I, like, on the way home, I was like, oh, I really want to listen to the original again. Like, I want to hear, like, the Marine Band playing, you know, this wonderful piece of music. And it just, like, made me so happy and excited. Yeah, I definitely on occasion will turn on like some Palestrina and just listen to those pure voices and um, but yeah, so I guess kind of recap. So you know, practice, get involved in local just organizations, like force yourself to play your instrument every mm-hmm. once in a while. Like one to keep up your skills, but two just to like like it's good for you. It's like mm-hmm. eating your vegetables or going on a jog. Like you don't want to do it. It's not fun. Mm-hmm. I want to sit on the couch, but like just do it. Play some scales. Play some arpeggios. It's going to be okay. Pull out that old recital piece you loved. Right. See if you can still remember it. It would be amazing. Um, you know, and then and then go go and listen to live music. Listen to good music. Um, and keep your ear fresh. And it'll remind you. You'll, you'll be reminded. If nothing else, remind you of the times. Yeah. Of when... <laughs> Of when you were so in love with music that you wanted nothing more but to share it with the world. So, yeah. So, uh, email us, please. We still, I have not gotten any emails. Are you there? Are you there? <laughs> Can you Can hear, hear me? me? I thought it. Um, I thought it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, small town music podcast at gmail.com. Especially this summer, like, what do you want to? What do you want to do to like gear up for the next school year? What do you want to hear about? Do you want to hear about? 
funny teacher stories? Do you want to hear about how we were doing our curriculum maps? Do you want to hear lesson plan ideas? Like, seriously, like, yeah, whatever you want. Um, find us on Instagram, small dot town music, TikTok, small town music, YouTube, small town music, Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, Podbean. We're everywhere. All the <laughs> so many places. We have like three TikTok videos. I'll do more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but thank you so much for listening.